Hello, Internet! We are here again, and as you're guessing, I'm gonna answer your questions. Mine's less about music and more about when making original music. Were you ever overly critical of the original compositions you've made? If so, how did you deal with it or get past? I love my compositions and I'm extremely proud of them. Then some days they just aren't good enough. Weird question, but I don't have any other friends that are musicians where I'm currently living. Well, that's the experience of any artist that is worth his name. Um, yes, you write songs, and then yes, someday they sound great, and you're all excited at how, how, was be how beautiful are those things you can make, and then the day after, the very same songs sound like a steaming pill of whatever you want, okay? So it's, it's, it's hard, it's harsh, and it changes every day, and that's the thing. You need to learn to write songs um, without getting too attached to the final um, product, okay? So, I call it writing for a trash can, meaning every time I write a song, I never write a song to be recorded or published or anything. I write a song expecting it to throw it completely away. And then, if I like it, I keep it, of course, okay? But if I like it and I keep it, it's a bonus. The enjoyment for me is in writing the song not in having it recorded or published or anything. I like to write songs, even if I don't record them, even if, even, if the, even if I never put them down in sound, even if I just write them on the score, knowing that the song is there, hearing the sound in my mind, hmm, that's how I have fun. Uh, and this helped me a lot. But then of course, as any artist, you're gonna have periods where you're, you're really highly confident in what you do and everything feels well. And I are going to have periods when you are really not as confident in what you do at all, and it's not going to feel as well at all, and you're going to question every artistic choice you make. It is going to happen. It's normal. And my idea is, again, don't take those feelings too seriously. They come and go. Just keep writing, okay? Every artist has felt that. Every, every single, no, it doesn't matter how great as musicians they are, it doesn't matter how great we repute them to be right now, every artist has felt that. And if you go and read about any of the famous musicians, whether modern musicians, or older musicians, or, okay, you're gonna find that. You're gonna find that Beethoven kept uh, compulsively rewriting his pieces, even after the, he published them. And then uh, he was getting incredibly angry at the piano when he was writing. Uh, you're gonna find that uh, some people burned um, part of their of, of the of the music uh, the music they wrote because they didn't want anybody to see what those the the, the 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 trials the errors or a different version of their scores. You're gonna find people kept lots of songs in the vault. You're gonna find artists like Prince and reportedly Prince. Uh, in, in his daily routine has recorded a song. So he wakes up, he writes a song, he records the song, puts it in the vault every day for all his career until the career sadly ended. Every day he did that. Of course, not all those songs are masterpieces, but then after a few months, just grab the best of the songs and there is your album. And this keeps him in top shape. The best song Prince rights are so good because you also wrote all the other songs that we are never gonna hear and they're in a vault somewhere. So you see, that's the idea. Keep writing. Forget about judging if what you're doing is good or not. Here's a good thing instead. Do you enjoy your music? If you listen to your music, it makes you feel something. Again, forget if it's good or not. Forget if it's original or not. Forget if it's cheap or not. Anything goes in music as long as it makes you feel something. And if what it makes for you to feel something is to use something that other people think is not good, to hell with them, okay? Make some music that makes you feel something. And if you feel something from your own music, you can be damn sure other people are gonna feel something too. And that's what you want as an artist. So forget if it's good, forget, forget judging your music. Make music that makes you feel something. Tritone is a newt technique. I think that's a genius joke. I know that half the audience will not understand the joke. So I'm gonna ask you that. If you get this joke, write in the comment the explanation of the joke so everybody can laugh. Thank you. I think the avoidance of parallel fifths isn't getting a fair shake. It has a lot of merit in the context of aesthetic framework it was practiced and conceived. I guess it should be taught with that in mind. I totally agree. 
The thing is that I made more than one video on parallel fifths. In some videos, I said that parallel fifths can be used. In other videos, I say parallel fifths are best avoided in some specific situation. You notice that I didn't say that you must or must not use parallel fifths. And by the way, in all videos, I typically give both those sides a, a fair share. The thing is that whenever you write something about parallel fifths on the internet, people are going to say that you should never use them or you must use them because they sound good. Guys, it depends what you want to do, okay? In the specific aesthetic of the Baroque period and classical music just after the Baroque period, sure, don't use parallel fifths. They don't sound in that style. In more modern style, use parallel fifths. They sound good. It's just a sound, okay? So, it's just a sound and the situation has been blown out of proportion because on some of the older manuals it's written to never use a parallel fifth because in that style they were not using it. So, all the title of my videos like Forbidden Music Theory, it's a tongue-in-cheek shot to death, okay? I don't think parallel fifths are forbidden, period. I mean, who could forbid that? Is that what is that? A, a music theory world government telling you that it's against the Geneva Convention to use parallel fifth? Come on, guys, let's be serious here, okay? So, they're not forbidden. Most people teach them that they're forbidden, and some people teach them that they're completely... Uh, that you can use them. I think you can use them. I think you can do whatever you want with your music, as long as you know the sound, okay? So, let's be clear. You like them, use them. You don't like them, don't use them. If you want to compose in that specific style, don't use them. If you want to compose in any other style, feel free to use them. And that's the whole story. Alternative title, How to Jacob Collier. How to Jacob Collier. That was a comment on the negative harmony video, which is curious because I don't think negative harmony is the Jacob Collier thing. Because Jacob Collier, no, he uses a negative harmony, but not as often. He has things used more often. So you guys want a Jacob Collier trick or something that makes you sound like Jacob Collier? He has one. He does this in several songs. I'm actually surprised nobody put this out first because it's pretty obvious once you get to, to it. So one thing Jacob does is that, of course, he sings melodies and harmonizes those melodies. But one thing he does pretty often is this. And again, I'm not going to give you one song where he does it. Listen to some Jacob Collier. If you listen to him, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, go and listen to him. I mean, it's pointless for me to dissect his songs to show you this little thing. He does this. Let's say you have a melody. Okay? He typically harmonizes this melody, however he does. Okay, so I'm just harmonizing with a few simple... That's just a G chord, a G6 chord. Once he gets on the last note and holds the last note, he does that. The melody note stays where it is. All the other notes in the chord go down one half step at a time. So you're going to be this. That's something he does. So, again, what's happening here? I have this chord. This chord for the curious is um, G, D, E, B, and the melody note is this B. The top note stays the same. The other three notes are here, and I'm just moving down, down a fret, and then another fret, and then another fret, however I want, okay? So how many times I want? So again. He does this all the time. Um, of course he does it with his voice. Sometimes he does it also with the piano, actually. But <clears throat> it's kind of a typical trick he uses. So, that's how to Jacob Collier. Certainly we can enjoy music of other cultures, even if we can't understand it. And to your point, I worked in China in the 1990s and early 2000s, and Western classical music was very popular there. So was Kenny G for some reason. Well, of course we can understand music of other cultures. The thing is that there are two debates here. Music is nature or nurture. So music is innate or it's learned. If music is innate, you can understand music of all cultures because we are all humans. So we have all the same uh, uh, general brain structure, okay? So any kind of music you can understand. If music is nurtured instead, so if music is learned, that means you can learn to listen to this music. The question is that if you can learn in a short amount of time, but if you try to listen to music of different cultures, you may have an initial shock because the music sounds different, the timbers may not be familiar, the structure is not familiar, etc. But your brain is going to make sense of the music. So 
whatever, you name it, okay? Any kind of musical tradition, maybe the first half an hour, one hour is gonna be hard on you, but then after a while, your brain gets the idea and you start understanding the structures, okay? Again, if it's, not, if it's innate, if it's nature, you have it in you already. If it's nurture, so if it's learned, you can learn. There is really no, no, no difference here. Whatever music is, you can listen. Now, the question, the, the, the question is, how do we do that in the least painful way? Here's uh, a system that works. You put, some, you put the music you want to learn, so let's say gamelan, okay, um, as background music, and you lower the volume of the music until it's barely audible, okay? So not, not hard rock loud, okay, but just barely audible. You should hear the rhythm, you should hear the sounds, but it should be in the background, very quiet. And then you leave this on while you go about your day, okay? So you have the office doing whatever you want, or you, you're driving your car or something, and you have this music at low level, barely audible. It doesn't matter if you can actually understand everything, just leave it there, okay? Subli subliminal if you want, okay? I don't really believe in subliminality, but the point is, that's there. This way it doesn't disturb you, it doesn't intrude your consciousness or concentration, but it's there. After a few days of this, let's say after a week of this, where you listen to two, three hours of this very quiet background music so it doesn't disturb you, after a week of that, try and listen to this music and you see that it makes way more sense, okay? And by the way, this works with everything. It doesn't have to be something of other cultures, okay? If you never listen to Bach or Beethoven or Mozart, that's a great way to get started with that. Keep Bach in the background at a low volume for a week. Once you finish that, you will understand Bach. It's not that this Bach is more complex and so hard to understand than everybody else. If anything, it's simpler. It's simpler because it's closer to your culture if you're a Western listener. It works, okay? It's easy, it works, it's painless. And the thing you don't expect, but you're gonna realize if you do that, is that there is so much emotion in different kinds of music that you're not accessing right now because you don't understand it yet. And once you do this, suddenly this music becomes emotional. You start to really understand it, okay? It's, it's an interesting experiment how the same piece of music says, tells you nothing today, and a week from now you're like, wow, that's great. Okay, so just try. You're gonna be surprised.